should have grabbed my water. All right, hey everybody, welcome to Heifer USA. I'm Tyler Pearson. That's Christine Hernandez. Thanks for joining us. We're live out here in our pastures at Heifer Ranch in Perryville, Arkansas. And if you're watching this video, we're going to be talking all about our spring lambing season here at Heifer Ranch. And we got lots to show you, as you can see. Uh, we got over how many lambs on the ground, Christine? We have about 126 lambs. 126 lambs on the ground. So we're just going to be hanging out with you today, answering your questions. If you're in the live feed, just type them in the chat. If you're watching this video after the live broadcast is over, just type your questions down in the comments below and we'll get to those later. Uh, but thanks for joining us and really excited to show you and get up close and personal with our sheep flock and all of these baby lambs that we have here at the ranch. Uh, I'll be monitoring your questions live here, so ask away. And not, not a real planned video today, but just gonna be showing you what we're doing and answering your questions along the way. Um, so Christine, how many uh, did you say we have on the ground again? We currently have about 126 lambs on the ground, and we have been lambing just over a week. So that's a lot of lambs in a very short period of time, and we've had an insane number of multiple births. So you typically want your sheep to have twins, and you know that's really good. That helps your flock grow faster. Um, this year we have actually had one set of quadruplets, so that's one ewe with four lambs, and then we've had 17 sets of triplets, lots and lots of twins, and only a few singles. So it's been really busy out here, but it's really fun and entertaining. Um, so yeah, we just want to be able to show all that to you guys. Cool. Yeah, and if you stick around for the live stream, uh, there were some newborn lambs uh, within the last 24 hours out on pasture that we haven't field processed yet. So we're going to try to do that during the stream. Uh, you might get to see Christine run around and try to catch a <laughs> baby lamb or two. Um, so we'll show you our field processing uh, setup and how we do that whenever newborn lambs. And this is the time of day that typically um, newborn lambs have been dropping. And I don't know if that's the correct term, sure. but... I'm going with it. Um, and so there's a chance that you might get to see a live lamb birth if that's something that you're interested. We're gonna leave the stream going as long as we can today. So if you just wanna come in and check it out, uh, it'll be here for you. So stick around if you wanna see how we field process lambs. If you want to have a chance at seeing a live lamb birth, that's gonna be in this video as well. And getting up close and personal with as many of these uh, little lambs as we can. So um, can, can we get a little closer maybe and just see if they don't get too skittish maybe? Yeah, we can see whoever you want. Okay. So we have we have about 119 ewes here on pasture. We did ultrasounds with them back in the fall about 60 days after we introduced the ram to them for their breeding season. And so we were able to have a vet come out here and do some ultrasounds so we could see who was bred. And with most of them, we were able to count how many fetuses they were bred with. Um, so that has actually been very helpful in knowing who's gonna have multiples, kind of knowing how many lambs we should expect. Um, we've actually had quite a few of them, you know, be scanned for singles or twins and end up having twins or triplets. So we're having more lambs than we originally thought, which is a good thing. Um, but yeah, so we are just over a week into our breeding season and only half of our ewes have lambed so far. We still have, I believe I counted it was like 56 lambs, 56 ewes left to lamb. So, um, you know, our lamb numbers will probably double by the end of next week. We should have most of our lambs on the ground by March 10th, which would be this Friday. I awesome. Believe. So there's a good chance yeah. that uh, we might we might see one today then. Yes, I will keep my eyes out for any signs that a ewe is in labor. And I'll make sure to point it out to you. Cool, cool. But, yeah, th uh, if you're watching, let us know where you're watching from. i say hey real quick uh, to Dio Moy from Nigeria, Magnolia de Leon in New York, Luke Welch right here in Conway, Arkansas. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, just say hi, let us know where you're watching from. And if you're raising sheep, uh, let us know how your operation is going as well. So I wanted to ask also, you had a set of quadruplets this yes. year, is that right? Yes, we had one set of quadruplets. Uh, we have another you out here that is very, very large. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't be surprised if she also has quadruplets. Wow, and, and that's so, rare, right? For me, it's rare. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're a pasture-based operation. So I think our ewes are being so productive this year, having so many lambs, because they went into their breeding season being so healthy. Wow. Um, so that really helped increase their conception rate. 
Well, if you see those quadruplets, uh, let, let, me, let me know. We, we should definitely show that if, if they're around. Uh, uh, well, technically they're not around. So uh, you only has two teats, mm -hmm. you know, so she can have twins very easily. Um, she can also have triplets on her, you know, just the lambs are going to have to share a little bit more. But with the quadruplets, we had one that was about three pounds. So we went ahead and turned um, that one into a bottle baby. Gotcha, gotcha. So it's not with the flock, it's, it's somewhere not. else getting nope. get nursed with but a bottle. But she is out here. I believe she's 1825. Well, nice. Yeah. Let's take a walk here and show, show the folks the, the herd. So you can see um, all of our ewes, most of them still have it on there pretty well, but they all have their ear tag number painted onto both of their sides so that we can easily identify who she is. We know what her number is. Um, and then the lambs are also painted with their mother's ear tag number. So we know who belongs with who. Um, those red ones walking by right there, mm -hmm. they are actually a set of triplets. There's the third one over there. Um, mm -hmm. So all of our triplets we paint with red because it's a very bright color, you know, that catches our eye first. And the triplets are really important to keep an eye on to make sure that they are all staying healthy, that they're all nursing and get enough to drink. Um, our twins are painted with the blue. You can kind of see some of the blue ones out there. And then our singles right here um, are painted with purple. Gotcha. So that just helps us know when we come out here, we check the flock a few times a day. Um, it's really important for the first few days the lambs are born, you know, make sure they're staying with their mom, make sure that the moms can keep up with them as well. So that's going to be really important for those triplets. Awesome. They're just uh, taking a break. And you got, I see some of these red ones, I don't know if you guys can see, but they've got a little, uh, little coat on them, right? Yes. What's that all about? So those are called Lamb Max, mm -hmm. and I got them from Shearwell. And they're, they're basically like see-through lamb raincoats. Mm -hmm. So um, over the last week that we've been lambing, we've actually had two pretty intense rainstorms and some thunderstorms. And so I put those raincoats on all the lambs that were born that day that the rain was coming. That way it helps keep them dry and warm. Um, you know, the best thing for them is actually to get a full stomach of milk and to continue nursing and that will help them digest their food and keep them warm, but these raincoats definitely helped, you know, keep them warm and dry as well. Awesome. Okay, we've got a quick question here, and before I get to the question, I want to let you guys know that if you like what you're seeing here at Heifer USA and you're new to the channel, or if you seen us before, uh, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications because in the next couple of weeks we have a 40 minute video that we're about to publish that we've spent over six months in the making that is all about how we breed and raise sheep here at Heifer Ranch. It is going to cover everything you need to know about raising sheep out on pasture uh, from, you know, uh, breeding, in, you know, introducing rams, uh, the lambing process, the field processing that we'll show you a little later today, and so much more information featuring the amazing Christine Hernandez herself. So if you are interested in raising sheep and you would like to know more, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications so that you won't miss when we drop that 40-minute feature-length video all about how we raise sheep on pasture. Um, okay, first question from Kennedy Reynolds. She wants to know, will bottle babies ever return to the flock? No, I typically sell our bottle babies um, within 24 hours of them being born. I want them to, well, and also depends on why they are a bottle baby. So um, if it's say like a smaller triplet that's with a mom, I will, I want that lamb to stay with its you as long as possible to get all that really good colostrum and that will help keep them healthy further on in their life. Um, but if we have one that say is, is rejected or we don't know who its mother is, then we will, I have a list of a few farmers around the area that are fantastic, you know, and they will purchase those bottle babies from us. That takes a lot of work off of our hands. It gives them an enterprise to add to their farm. Um, so yeah, and with a bottle baby, so that the, the lamb will get used to humans and that they think that their milk comes from the humans. So they get a really strong bond with those people that are feeding them. And so they don't have that really good flocking instinct that they would have 
you know, being raised out on pasture the whole time that these lambs are getting right now, just walking around with their mom and, and staying with her. Awesome. That's cool. a good question. Yeah, thanks for the great question. You guys keep them coming if you have any more. Um, I'll try to get a little closer. They get a little skittish, but they're just so cute. They are cute. Like this one right here nestled up in the grass. <laughs> He's got a little bed. He says no. Nope, they said nope. That's okay. So can you tell me a little bit about, uh, uh, just about the history of sheep at the ranch? What, you know, a little bit about um, the breed and why we raise the sheep, what they're for and sure, that yeah. operation. So our sheep flock is 100% pasture based and they are, so they're out on pasture all the time. You know, majority of their diet is going to be their grass and the forage that they get out here. Um, so. Here at Heifer USA, at Heifer Ranch, we have had sheep, I believe, since the 1980s. So a really, really long time. And we started with the Katahdin breed. So Katahdins are a hair sheep. They will naturally, you know, start shedding their winter coat. Around this time, there's a few out here that are shedding pretty well. I might be able to point them out to you. Mm -hmm. Like 2161 right there, her back's starting to shed off a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so that means that we don't have to shear them. You know, they will naturally shed all that and they'll become very slick for that summertime heat. Um, Katahdins are also known to be very high in parasite resistance, which is absolutely important when you're raising yeah. sheep out on pasture. Um, all the parasites, you know, are gonna be on your grass and your soil around the manure that they're leaving behind. Right. Um, so yeah, we got sheep back in the 1980s from where they originated, which was up in Maine on Mount Katahdin through a, a farmer named Michael Peel. Uh -huh. um, so we've had Katahdin since the very beginning. A couple years ago, I introduced a Dorper ram into our Katahdin flock. I have made sure to only allow him so many use because I want to keep that 100% pure Katahdin influence here. So about 25% of our flock is going to be that Katahdin Dorper cross. So the Dorper is still a hair sheep, so all those sheep are still going to be shedding their hair in the summertime. Um, and they still have really good parasite resistance, not as much as the Katahdins do, but uh, we were hoping to get a, a lamb, you know, that grew a little bit faster, that was a little bit meatier. But over the last couple of years, I've been doing monthly weights on the lambs and deciphering between the Dorper and the Katahdins. And since they're managed the same, they're managed together, mm -hmm. they've actually been gaining basically the same amount of weight every month. Yep. Um, so it, a lot of it comes down to, yes, having good genetics, but also having very good management and husbandry skills on your farm. Gotcha. Cool. Well, we've got some more questions. Um, Dio Moy says, what about, what is the vaccination schedule uh, for the lambs? So we will vaccinate all of our ewes at least 30 days before they are due to have their lambs. So this year we started lambing on February 26th. We vaccinated everyone at the beginning of January. So over that 30 day mark. We only vaccinated them with CD and T. And then that way, when your lamb is born and it drinks that colostrum from its ewe, that's how it's getting its immunity is through that colostrum. None of it will pass through the placenta. So that's why it's important to make sure that your lambs get adequate colostrum within a few hours of being born and within that 24 hour window after birth. Awesome. Um, we will vaccinate the the lambs, you know, I, I believe when they're about four months old, we'll give them a vaccine and then we'll booster them. And that also allows our replacement ewe lambs to already have been vaccinated when they get bred. And then they're on the same vaccination schedule as the rest of our ewes. Might be kind of confusing. But. No, that's great. Well, if it is, um, 
All the more reason to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so when we drop that video, which includes all of the information Christine just told you about vaccination schedules for our sheep flock and a lot more. I'm telling you, if you like raising sheep, you want to know more, it's going to be an amazing resource for you uh, and it'll be coming out in just a couple of weeks. Super duper excited about it. Thank you for the great question, uh, Mr. Moy. Um, hey, w welcome to the channel, David Smathers. Uh, hope you enjoy it. We, we produce a lot of content here on our YouTube channel for regenerative agriculture and small scale farmers. And if you are interested in being transported to a farm and learning about regenerative agriculture, this is the place for you. Uh, another question from Ruyel Khan. Um, he's asking about, I think, predators. He says animal invasion on the sheep. Um, we talked about how many sheep we have on the mm -hmm. farm. Um, so you said over 150 lambs and then how many ewes? We have 119 ewes mm -hmm. and about 126 lambs right now. Right now with, with more to go. Yes. So uh, tell, tell Mr. Khan about predators. Yes. So uh, the main predator that we would have around us is going to be the coyote or you know neighborhood domestic dogs. That would be our number one predator that we need to watch out for um, and to help with predator control, we have two livestock guardian dogs that stay with our flock all the time. Um, we have one of them just over there hiding behind that brush, yep. it's Uno. Yep. And then Sam is over there laying down as well. Um, so they stay with the flock all the time. And it's been really amazing actually during this whole lambing season, I've rarely seen them actually leave the pasture. Yeah. Um, normally they'll go ahead and, and do their rounds around where the sheep are, but they know that this is a very important time. And so they are buckling down and doing a fantastic job with being livestock guardian dogs. They have been really good. I mean, they gave me a good barking as soon as I got here. Yes. So uh, when they're bleeding like that, can you yes. tell me about that? Um, that's that's a, they're trying to find somebody, right? Yeah. So. 19026 is what's painted on her side, mm -hmm. and that's 19026 right over there. So she's calling for her mom. Mm -hmm. Her mom is is calling a little bit for her, mm -hmm. and eventually they'll they'll go and find each other again. <laughs> um, you know that's that's a really important thing with sheep is with their bonding time. So immediately after the sh the lamb is born, they have to bond. So they'll bond through sound, which is how they're finding each other right now and then also through scent. So she's gonna go up and she's gonna smell that lamb. She's gonna make sure that that lamb belongs to her. Mm -hmm. She'll smell its face, she may smell its butt. If that lamb is hers, then she'll let that lamb nurse. Mm -hmm. If it's not hers, then she'll typically headbutt it away mm -hmm. um, and tell it to go find its own mom. And she's got triplets, right? She has triplets, yes. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, they found each other. They found each other. That was a perfect example. I don't see anyone else in labor, but I'm keeping my eye out for you. Yeah, yeah. so if you're just joining us, guys, uh, we're live here at Heifer Ranch in Perryville, Arkansas, hanging out with our sheep flock and over 150 baby lambs on the ground. And we're hanging out to see if one might give birth uh, so we can show you a live birth. And this is around the time of the day when they've been usually uh, birthing on the pasture, so there's a good chance you might get to see one if you stick around. Uh, we're hanging out with our livestock manager, Christine Hernandez and answering any questions you might have as well and just trying to get as close as we can to these little creatures without scaring them off or disrupting their day too much. Um, Kennedy Reynolds asks a great question. She wants to know, what are some of the signs that tell you a you might give birth? Well, usually the number one thing that I tell people is that that you is going to try and you know move away from the flock she's going to try and have birth not within the flock they have definitely proven me wrong a lot this year um, i think just because there's so many of them there's not very much space for them to go off on their own or mm -hmm. they'll already have picked their lambing bed and the flock you know moves back towards them um, but you know the signs that you're really looking for is that she's going to be restless so she'll be standing up and then laying down and just doing that very often. Mm -hmm. um, she'll start pawing at the ground. Um, a really good sign, if you can get close enough, would be she will have mucus. She'll expel her mucus plug and then have some 
mucus or a water bag hanging out. Mm -hmm. um, if she, they'll do most of their hard labor laying down. Um, so if you see her like laying down with her neck stretched in the air or with her like stretching out her back legs, you know, she's probably having contractions, starting to push a little bit. But yeah. Awesome. Well, guys, keep watching because here in a minute we're going to go try to catch some of the newborn lambs that uh, were birthed in the last 24 hours and show you what our field processing looks like for newborn lambs, how we, you know, keep our good records and make sure that the lambs are taken care of as soon as they're out on pasture. So we got that to come soon. And these guys are letting me get about as close as I've gotten. <laughs> and this one has the... Um, the little raincoat on that you yes. mentioned. I'm up. There we go. There you go. That one's falling off a little bit. <laughs> so these are through shear well. Um, mm -hmm. They're also biodegradable. Nice. So the raincoats will eventually fall off. Um, if we find them, obviously we'll pick them up and put them in the trash, but um, they are biodegradable. So that is something really cool that I like about them. Some of our lambs are a little too small and they just fall off. They don't stay on very well. And those are our lambs. They're like five to six pounds. But um, the bigger lambs, they stay on pretty well. There's a, a hole to put their neck through and then there's a hole for each leg. And it allows their, their neck and their head to be open and then also for their back end to be accessible for their mom to be able to, to smell them and identify them as their lambs. Awesome. Another great question from our good friend, Kristen Crawley. She says hi. Hi, Kristen. She wants to know, um, how do you know when a ewe is done giving birth? Um, so, the number one sign that she's done giving birth is that she should pass her placenta. Gotcha. Um, a lot of the times, you know, if they have one lamb, people will say, well, she's going to have another one. The question is always, you know, maybe or it depends. Um, she'll either pass another water bag if it's like a a yellowy clear fluid water bag then she'll probably have another lamb um, if it's red or less of a water bag but more just membrane that mm -hmm. will be her placenta mm -hmm. and we have all sorts of placenta bombs around here um, that yeah we if we see one to show you. we can show folks um, she will you know if she if she has time and if she stays near her lambing bed you know she may consume some of it some do, some don't. Here's the, one right here. Yes. Placenta um, bomb, as you call it. Yeah. Well, you just have to watch out and step on them. Yep. <laughs> um, the dogs will sometimes come up and, and eat them too. Uh -huh. Otherwise, you know, buzzards will come in after we move them. Gotcha. Good. Great question. Thanks, Kristen. We hope you're doing well. Another great question from David Smathers. He says, uh, have you had any problems with lambs rejecting a baby? He knows some farmers uh, do when they have three of them. Um, so we have had just a few issues <coughs> with that so far this year. And yes, it, it is that problem. You know, she has three lambs. It's kind of hard to keep up with. Um, a lot of the times, or two of the issues that we've had this year, is I made the mistake of I went and did the field processing with a mom that had twins too soon after birth. Mm -hmm. You know, she was very bonded to the first lamb that she had because she was able to lick that lamb and smell that lamb and have it nurse off of her while she was in the process of having her second lamb. And I just didn't allow her enough bonding time before I interfered. And so what we had to do with her, we got her in the trailer with both of her lambs and we just went and put her up in a stall in one of our barns. Um, and within 24 hours, you know, she accepted that lamb back. An issue that we had this morning with the flock is we had a ewe that had triplets last night before we left. And we did the field processing. So we have it all in our records. They had their mom's number sprayed on their side. He's sunbathing right I caught there. this one snoozing. <laughs> Uh, but then we also had a ewe that was in labor. You know, she already had some of the mucous membrane hanging out. She stole one of the triplets. Hmm. So that happens sometimes. They're called granny ewes. So they are in labor. They know that they should have a baby. Their hormones are telling them that. They haven't physically had their lambs yet. But they hear lambs calling, and they're calling for those lambs. 
So sometimes they can steal one. Gotcha. Um, so we had our triplet mom, who should have had three. She only had two with her this morning. And then that younger ewe lamb that we would consider the granny, she had twins, but she also had one of the triplets. Mm. So we took the triplet mom and all three of her lambs, and we put them in a barn stall for the next day so that they can rebond. And so that she doesn't, the, the granny doesn't try and steal that lamb back. Gotcha, great question. Thank you guys so much for asking the great questions. You wanna go try to find um, our newbies? Yes, so I can grab my lambing kit. Okay. Um, we have four new lambs out here, so two sets of twins. Mm -hmm. um, the ones that we will go and field process, they were born at about 10 o'clock this morning. Um, so they're just a couple hours old. Nice. But as long as they're, they're dried off, um, I've seen both of them nurse off of her. Okay, well you, you do your thing, whatever okay. you need to do. Feel free to narrate as you wish, and I will just follow you along. So we're using the term field processing. Yes. What does that mean? So that is basically, you know, I am going through the process of taking all of their information. So their their mom's number, what their ear tag number is going to be, their birth weight. Um, so getting all of their information into our records, we are processing them into our system. Nice. Well, while we're, while we're here, can we talk about this kit just real briefly? Yeah, sure. Sorry, it's a little unorganized. I've had to use it a lot this morning. I bet. Okay, so if you've seen any of our other videos, you have seen this black and gray box. So this has been my lambing kit for many years, and so we keep everything inside of there. Well, I was getting really tired of having to lug that around the pasture because with our lambing kit, I take my kit and all of my supplies to the lambs and to the ewe. I don't bring them to me. I want them to stay at their lambing bed um, as long as possible so they don't lose each other. Mm -hmm. So I got this wagon so we can easily just transport all of our stuff around together. Very nice. Um, so yeah, so everything we need is in here. What are some of the things that you keep, if you don't mind? Just a second, let me get my binder. Oh, please. So we got ear tag. I know some of the stuff. So you got ear tags for sure. Castration bonds and kit. Christine will tell you all about this stuff in just a second when she gets back. Great question from Jennifer Smith. She says, "How often do you check the sheep when they're lambing?" Depends what's going on. <laughs> um, we ideally, ideally. So we will check them the very first thing in the morning, and we will come out here and see who has what. Um, you know, a good number of lambs are born late at night, early in the morning, throughout the night time. Uh, so we just come out here, get a count, make sure everyone is, is bonded, make sure no one needs assistance. So definitely first thing in the morning, last thing before we leave. And then we will be out here usually for a couple hours during the day doing some field processing. Mm -hmm. You know, getting all information from the new lambs. Whenever I drive by, I take a look make sure no one needs help, make sure no one is out by themselves. Um, so during full lambing season, mm -hmm. we are probably out here, you know, five or six times a day. When it's just the sheep flock and we don't have any new lambs coming, usually twice a day. Awesome, great question, Jennifer. So I see out there, it looks like, are those the new ones? Yes. And mm -hmm. does she still have a placenta hanging down a little bit? Um, Possibly. Okay. It, it's really red, it may just be some of her Leftover. Blood. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. All right. We'll see if she passed it or not. Okay. Um, okay, so with the lambing kit. This is exciting. I'm excited. <laughs> Hope you guys are too. So we have our lambing binder. So everything we need in here. We have our pencil pouch, extra pencils, highlighters. Um, we have our list of supplies that we'll have. Mm hmm. And then I have directions for how each step of the field processing will work. Mm -hmm. And if you watch that new video with Tyler, Tyler was talking about, I believe all this will be included. Yeah, we have a that. P. So in that new video, guys, uh, a lot of this stuff Christine is showing you, we've included in a downloadable PDF for you, uh, so you can use on your farm as well. Um, so in here, I have this is our field lambing record sheet. 
Um, only about 28 lambs can fit on here at a time. So we are actually well over here. Wow. And we've had 146 born total. Um, so that doesn't, this also includes any bottle babies, anyone that may have been a stillbirth or anything like that. Everything gets recorded down here so that we know accurate numbers. Great. Um, but yeah, in here we do the, the date they're born, the use number, what that lamb number is going to be, if it's a male or female lamb. Uh, we take everyone's birth weight. We make sure that it's nursing off of its mom. We will cut an iodine, its umbilical cord. If it's a male, they'll go ahead and get banded, so they'll get castrated right away. And then we will paint brand them. So we'll use spray paint and paint their mom's number on them. Um, as I mentioned before, we have the Katahdins, and then we also have the Dorper influence. And so we just mark if it's a Katahdin or a Dorper, and that will determine which ear it gets tagged in. Nice. Um, we have notes, a note section. So, for example, if it is a bottle baby or if it was stillborn or anything else, mm -hmm. it will go in there. Um, for example, 2004, she was a granny. So she was in, in labor and trying to steal someone else's lambs at the same time. Gotcha. Um, and then something else I added this year were these three columns over here. Mm -hmm. So we are scoring the U on her birthing ease, her lamb vigor, and her mothering ability. Smart. So, for example, um, yesterday I had a pulled number 10's lamb for her. She wasn't able to have her lamb by herself, so she would get a three. Any you that has a lamb unassisted, you know, would get a score of one. And so that just helps us remember what's happening during the lambing season when we go and decide who we want to call from our flock. Um, because you think you'll remember it all, but then, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of the sheep out here. Gotcha. Um, and then we have, this is a list of all of our U's in numerical order. Mm -hmm. um, so their U number, if they were bred to a Katahdin or a Dorper, and then what they were scanned for during the ultrasound. Okay. So, yeah, as you guys can see, lots of information here that we're keeping track of. Yeah. And we will be including details of all of that in the long form video. Shall we get if started? If we want to go out there, yeah. I can go through. Yeah, I think all that's this. good. That's a good um, plan. I don't think I need my shepherd's crook. If I do, y'all will see me run. And I got half a hand. If I need to grab something, you let me know. I'm good. Thank okay. you. Hey, David Smathers from Southeastern Ohio. Thanks for watching and thanks for the great question. If you guys are just joining us, we're live at Heifer Ranch. Hi. Hanging out with our sheep flock and all the lambs that are on the ground answering your questions. And we're about to field process two newborn, less than 24 hours old, baby lambs. Just talking a about- A couple hours old. Oh, a couple hours old. So talking about how we take care of them as soon as they're born. Hi. Oh, that one's ready. It says me yeah. first, me first. So she has passed her placenta. She has that right there on the okay. ground. Yeah, yeah, I see. I think it was hanging down just a minute ago. So she's a, her ear tag number is 2208. So she is actually just a year old. Hmm. Um, she had twins, which is okay. I prefer for my yearling replacements to only have singles. It's their first time, you know, being a mom. Hmm. But twins is okay. I have actually had two yearling ewes have triplets. So I will automatically pull one from them. Um, gotcha. So let me catch these. I should have brought my shepherd's crook. Okay, come on. You make it look so easy. Yeah. <laughs> come on. Come on, sweetie. So the reason why I want to bring my kit to the lambs is that I want her to know where her lambs are. Um, if she doesn't, you know, she might do exactly what she's doing now. 
running around, um, checking out all the other lambs. Yeah. These are both girls. Um, so I have a laundry hamper here because I take I take both the lambs at the same time. Um, if I don't, then she may take off with one of the lambs and not come back for her twins. So I just put one in the laundry basket while I do field processing for the other one. 2208. So she was bred to a Katahdin. Okay. Both of these are females. It's all right, sweetie. We're not going nowhere. All right. So the first thing I do is going to be taking a weight on them. When we have multiple lambs, I want to do all of the record keeping for one lamb before I move on to the other. It's going to get really loud. Yeah, that's right next to your microphone. <laughs> that's okay. Do what you need to do. It's all right. We can turn down the, the volume on us a little bit if we need to, Kennedy. Okay. Uh, so Royal Khan, I'll answer this. He asked while you're doing that, or unless you want to tell no, me anything. Go ahead. He, uh, so Royale, you asked about the coloring of the lamb kids, and we mentioned this earlier. So uh, singles, if, a, if, if they're born to singles, they get one color. Uh, twins get another color. Triplets get another color. Okay. All right, so you just took uh, weight? Is that I what that was? Weight. Yep. Um, okay. It sits in this sling. I lift it just far enough off the ground so that its feet aren't touching anymore. So this lamb was 6.3 pounds. All right. Good job, little girl. This is so exciting. I think this is the first time anybody's ever live streamed field processing newborn lambs on YouTube. It's got to be a first. It's a first for us. Absolutely. Okay, so the ear tag system this year isn't what I prefer. And that's because when I ordered our ear tags, there were 16 weeks on back order. Mm. So typically, I want ear tags to represent what year they were born. But I had to go with some basic ear tags of just numbered one through a hundred. And I got four different colors so that I can keep track of them that way. Gotcha. But in all of our other videos, um, I talk about our ear tag numbering system. Okay. And you're putting a cleaning solution, I imagine, yeah, on there? Yeah, so this is okay. just um, loop with antiseptic. Gotcha. Okay. So uh, for piercing our ears. I want to say thanks to our new subscriber, uh, Jesse Smith. Thanks for subscribing to us here at Heifer USA, where we produce tons of content on regenerative agriculture for small-scale farmers. Just tagging the sheep. The lamb. Yeah. So you keep track of them. Piece of cake. Yep. So I will iodine its umbilical cord. Mm -hmm. That just helps um, keep it nice and clean. It prevents them from getting joint ill. Yeah. Okay. Very good. And now she only needs to be painted. Okay, and this is an animal safe spray paint that uh, washes off yes. eventually, right? Yes. Okay, so you guys can see, no, no harm and here. Lots of different colors. Nice. Now, they're twins, so twins are blue? Twins are blue, yep. Okay, all done. One more. We got you. You'll have her back in just a second, okay? So now that this one is processed, mm -hmm. I'm just going to swap it out for its twin. Okay. So I want to give them both back to her at the same time. Interesting. Otherwise, what? she will take one and leave. Ah, I see, I see. That's that's experience right there. And okay, then you have to, almost done. Then you have to track her down with her other lamb. Yeah, this is pretty great, isn't it, David? I think so too. Uh, this is this is as live as it gets. So this one is seven pounds. Oh, the bigger sister. Yes. All right. What is the uh, average? I mean, is it six to seven pounds? Is that usually pretty average? Um, usually like seven, seven or eight. So she's very young. She's only a year old. Right. So these are actually really good sized twins for a year old. Good job, mom. 
I'll show you guys her behavior. See, she's she's just worried about it. We're almost done, okay? So she would get a one on her mothering. Good yeah. job. She gets a one on her birthing ease because she didn't need any assistance. Mm -hmm. um, she'll get a one on her mothering. You know, she is here. She's being attentive. She's calling for her lamb. She's being responsive to them. She hasn't ran off in search of anyone else's lambs. That's great. Almost done. Yep, you can watch. It's okay. You see we're taking good care. If it, if it was a boy, we would castrate it right now, too. Right. Good job, Mama. There you go. Wow, this is great. She just needs to get painted. <laughs> no, no color, no color coding based on gender. Their, their sex? ear tags are. Their sex. No, okay, the ear tags are based on sex. Yeah. Okay. All right, here we go. The moment we've been waiting for, Mom. Reunited. Piece of cake. That was quick. Yeah. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> she got to smell them first. Yeah, yeah make she sure has they're smell hers. Them, make sure they're hers. Sometimes that that spray paint, you know, will leave a smell for a little bit. But yeah. Good job, Mama. Um, yes. So the boys will get orange ear tags, and our females get yellow ear tags. And so that's a very good visual out on pasture, you know, when they're a little bit older to know who's male and who's female. Mm. Very nice. Cool. Well, that was one of the most exciting things I think we've live streamed and we've been doing this a long time. <laughs> what else? Very good. I'm looking at this one back here. You think she's like, uh, you know, getting some time to herself? Maybe think she's thinking about birthing soon? I'd have to see what number she is and if she's lambed yet. Looks like a one, but there's probably more. Stay tuned. Okay. Oh, that's my number 10. I pulled her lamb yesterday. Oh, okay. So she has one. She has a very big single on her. Oh, she's got one with her? Yeah. Number okay. 17 has twins right there. Uh huh. They were born um, probably around 11 or wanna so. Do, wanna do those next? We can, yeah. If it's they're, convenient for you. This is yep. so interesting. Maybe there's a boy in there. Yeah. I mean, it's up to you if you have a, if you need to no, do it another good. time. Let me fill all this out so I don't forget. Jump in here. All right, guys, if you're just joining us, we're live here at Heifer Ranch. Thanks for staying tuned with us if you've been around uh, watching for a little bit. We are live out in our uh, sheep pasture where we've been birthing our flock and our new lambs. Uh, we have over 150 new lambs on the ground already and about that many more to go. Um, over, over 120 ewes uh, out here on the pastures as well. And we'll be answering your questions live or if you're watching the recorded version, just type them down in the comments below. If you're enjoying what you're seeing, uh, we got a long form how to raise sheep on pasture video coming out in just a couple of weeks. We've been working for months and months on it. I'm super excited. It's going to teach you everything that you need to know about raising sheep out on pasture. Uh, we're going to drop it right here on this YouTube channel for free for you and to help you in your farming journey. So subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications if you want to see that video when it goes live or if you want to see um, any of our future live streams. We usually try to leave live stream at least once a month, sometimes two or three. And we do live streams here at the beautiful Heifer Ranch in Perryville, Arkansas, as well as uh, other farms all across the country in the United States, uh, showing you great regenerative, sustainable farming operations and how farming can be done differently than um, mass-produced conventional agriculture. Taking care of the earth, taking care of the animals, producing healthy, nutritious food, so she hasn't passed her placenta yet. That's what's hanging out of her right now. 
Um, okay. So you think she might still have one in I the hopper? I don't think so. Yeah. Um, just because of how stringy it is, that is placenta. If she was gonna have another one, it'd be more of like a water bag. Okay. Um, so she should, you know, the, the lambs nursing off of her will help her oxytocin levels increase. So that will help her placenta and her uterus detach from each other. And then she'll have contractions and push it out. Okay. Um, she'll have it, you know, on her own. If she doesn't have, if she doesn't pass it within 24 hours, you know, that'd be a retained placenta. Mm -hmm. um, you'd probably need some antibiotics and a, a shot from the vet. But gotcha. you don't ever want to pull that because it's probably still connected internally. Gotcha. Do you wait to process after they pass the placenta usually? No, they're up walking around. You can see that one nursing off of her. Yeah. Um, you know, they're dry. She's licked them off very well. So cool. We're good. Well, take, take, take it away. I mean, Thanks to our new subscriber. Appreciate you subscribing. Saw that earlier. I like to get all my things ready before I get the lambs. Number, are you 17? So these two lambs right here make 149 and 150. Okay. Lambs. Okay. When you're trying to lead a ewe with her lambs, it's important that she can see them. They're both girls. So, yes, she can hear them, but seeing them is also very important. So if you're holding them like up here snuggling them, she's not looking this high. Mm -hmm. So you want to be down at her level. Gotcha. So she can see them, yeah. smell them, look on them. That's good. Gemma. Yeah. Okay. Um, somebody asked, do we use Gallagher or Flockwatch? I'm not sure what they're referring to. Do you know? Oh, for our record system? That must be what it is, yeah. Um, we are in the process of getting a Gallagher system. Oh. So that that's really cool. Um, and hopefully we get that soon. So it'd be electronic ear tags that the ewes would have. Right. And so there's a wand. You can get her information and you can input all of your records oh, okay. right here. Nice. So Le um, Less paper. Yeah, so CR, we are going to be using Gallagher soon, and actually, yes. uh, we are Gallagher affiliate marketers, and if you guys purchase Gallagher products, you can get a 10% off discount code from your entire shopping order, and it'll be linked down in the description of this video, uh, maybe pinned in the comments. So if you purchase Gallagher products and you want 10% off, feel free to use our promo code. And when we implement those new systems Christine was talking about, yeah. we're definitely going to uh, make some content right here on our YouTube channel to show you how we're using it. <laughs> CR, are you using Gallagher or Flockwatch? Would love to know about your experience with them. Okay. So she was 8.2 pounds. Ooh, big, big girl. Ooh. Are they both females? Yeah, they're both females. Okay. okay. So this is an older you. So she's having just a little bit bigger babies. Mm -hmm. Good job, honey. So if you guys are just joining us, we are field processing newborn lambs, less than a few hours old. Easy does it. Just taking their weights, uh, iodine on the umbilical cord, ear tagging, answering any questions you guys have. So fascinating to watch. Seventeen. That's my lucky number. So she would also get a one in that mothering. <laughs> yeah, she's here. Yeah. She's not in my face, but she's being attentive to her lambs. And you, you. 
It's okay. You're okay. Okay, so she got her ear tag, way. And when you, when you do that, you feel for certain spots on the ear and you do it in just the right spot, right? Yeah, so you want it to be right in the middle of their ear. Uh -huh. So between their head and the tip of their ear, mm -hmm. in the middle, then also up and down. Gotcha. So on the inside of their ear, mm -hmm. you can see they have ribs, yeah. or like cartilage that runs through there. Uh -huh. You want to get it in the middle of there. You so try there's not no to nerve that. tissue or anything like that? Yeah. Because they're, they're just squirming a little bit because they're just scared. It's not really a painful process, yeah, right? Yeah, so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm holding them. I'm containing them. Their mom's right here talking to them. Uh-huh. Um, they would prefer to be with her than with me. For sure. And it, it's basically, it's an ear piercing. So. Nice. What yeah, and actually, that? guys, um, now that I think about it, you know, if, if you want to revisit this whole process and learn a whole lot more just about uh, field processing lambs, <laughs> we have a video already on our channel specifically about what we're doing right now where we go over all the contents in Christine's lambing kit here in detail, uh, links on where you can get them, all the details about the record sheet. Um, and we'll post that in the description of this video and you can find it on our channel. Um, I think it's everything you need to know or the ultimate lambing guide um, video. This one's real heavy. Oh, what do you, what do you, pre girl. What do you predict? Nine pounds. Nine pounder. 9.5. I'm really bad judgment of weight, so we'll see. <laughs> You've only done this a thousand times I know. probably. <laughs> All right, drum roll please. What do you think? What do you guys What's think out guess? in the audience? What are you guessing? Does this look like a nine pounder to you? I'm gonna go with 9.7. 9.7? Let's show, let's show the audience, let's show them. <laughs> oh, oh, oh now shaking. you're jumping. Oh. 9.7, I saw it at least once. Nice, I'll take it, that's a win. And this is my first time, look at that. <laughs> Yeah, so we got that video linked in um, the live chat for you if you want to watch it later. Our full video on field processing lambs. Or just watch this. Or just watch this and ask questions of an expert in real time. Golden opportunity. What's the most you've had to do in a day? Um, I believe we did over 30 the other day. What? Wow. We had six sets of triplets in one day. Wow. See, that one's okay. You checking on her? Oh, oh she's trying to jump out of that. <laughs> We've got to knock them over. <laughs> so another thing you want to check for, you know, is just to make sure that they have some full bellies. Uh huh. So if you hold them like this, you can use your hand. You want to feel in between their umbilical cord and their back legs. That's where their stomach's going to be. Uh huh. Um, you want to feel like a really full water balloon. Mm. Um, you don't want to be able to like touch your fingers. Okay, so you're making sure they're so, getting fed. Yep. Right. You can you can look at her udder. You know, make sure it's it's big. Make sure her teats are pretty uniform. That the lambs can get to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. We used to spray the iodine on their umbilical cords, uh -huh. but you just don't get a very good coverage yeah. if you spray it. Mm -hmm. So if you dip it, you know, you get it. Yes, on perfect. the umbilical cord and all around their navel. And you don't get iodine all over your clothes. That's true, because it doesn't come out. <laughs> I learned that last time. We made, when we were making that video, we linked in the description. I'm pretty sure I ruined a nice pair of pants. <laughs> About how long does that paint last? Um, it as lasts as a while. Yeah. The readability of it doesn't last as long. Right. You know, if depending on the weather. Um, some of them you can see out here, they're turning like into little blue smurfs because it's it's smearing a little bit, but Yeah. Um, but that's where, the, that's where the ear tags come in handy, I guess. Yes. Gotcha. So the paint is going to last, you know, a couple weeks long enough for us to make sure that everyone stays paired with their use. To make sure that you know that they're healthy and thriving so Great. usually after 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 a week we don't 
worry about it all too much unless we have a, a lamb that's just lagging behind or showing signs that it's not thriving or not getting enough milk. Awesome. Well, let's give it. Let's hear a round of applause for Christine Hernandez. Way to go! Thanks for showing us all of that. Yeah, of course. Fascinating stuff. So yeah, we are up to 150 lambs born. Awesome. And about about what size do you usually try to keep the flock? I mean, what are you, what are you trying to manage here? So all of our lambs will, all of our male lambs, and then whatever females we don't keep as replacements will be sold to the Grassroots Farmers Cooperative. Mm -hmm. But so we slowly want to be increasing our sheep flock. We have a closed herd. So I don't buy in any females to add to our flock. I keep replacements. So I keep female lambs from that year and I can replace the ewes I'm getting rid of due to other reasons, or I can keep them to increase the size of our flock. Mm -hmm. um, we've been holding steady at just over 100. Um, I know we're wanting to increase those numbers. You know, you want to be careful when you do that. You only want to keep the females as replacements, you know, if they're good enough to be in your flock. You need to have criteria that you're aiming for. Um, for example, if I keep a replacement female lamb, I want it to have born as a twin or a triplet. Mm -hmm. um, I want it to be 80% of its mature body weight going into the breeding season. I want to make sure it has good body conformation and make sure that it has you know good behavior, that it works well in our system. It's not one of those lambs that goes through our fences all the time. Right. And and, and that's for deciding what again? Which female lambs I will keep as replacements. Yeah, that was a question we just had. Kennedy Reynolds asked, uh, how do you decide which lamb become replacements? So that's great, great timing. Yeah, that way. And it, you know, making sure we haven't had to treat it with like a dewormer or anything like that. You know, it has a perfect health record. Nice. Well, this has been fascinating, Christine. Thank yeah. you so much for showing us all this and hanging out. Um, I think we're going to walk around a little bit more maybe and help you put your stuff up if you need to, or, but if you don't, you let me know. I'm keeping my eye on that you. Out there? Right there. She's facing us. Uh-huh. By the tripod? Um, to the right, but she's standing up. There's that you behind her. Oh, yeah? Okay. Yep. So she has her tail extended out. That's a good sign. Uh-huh. So she was laying down. She just got up and she's... Oh, she's gonna go lay down again. Circling she's a little totally bit. She's totally in labor. Yeah. Oh, we got so one in labor probably, guys. Okay, she's laying a little bit more on her side. Given that, you know, it may be an hour before she has a lamb. Sure. But she is in early stages of labor. Okay, good to know. All right, we, we've got one on the hook. And uh, fortunately, our live stream tech uh, will go for several hours. <laughs> so we are going to leave this live stream going for as long as... Um, it will last and like I said it can go for several hours so and she's um, pretty much already picked her spot uh -huh. as long as we don't give her a reason to move okay then she will have her lambs right there okay so she's already starting to expel some some mucus or some fluid like that's what she was looking at and smelling it on the ground before she laid back down right so that that right there is going to be her lambing bed okay um, about how close will she let me get? You could probably get right to where your tripod is. Okay. If you just leave it right there. Uh-huh. Okay, you can kind of see she didn't separate herself from the flock, mm -hmm. which is fine. Um, we just need to make sure no other ewes that are close to labor are going to come up and try and steal her lambs. Uh-huh. Um, can we uh, go maybe try to get yeah. a little closer? And Because I yeah. see she's having contractions. and maybe yeah, she's you can, pushing. You can talk about some of the signs. Sure. Okay. And um, I'll let you lead the way because I don't want to disturb her too much. Thanks again, Mom. Number 17, you're a champ. Yep. All right, so right over there is where we're going. The one laying down on the right is in labor. She just wanted to wait until the end of the live stream. Yeah, perfect timing. I'll do this for you. Yeah. Just let her get comfortable with us this close and yeah. see how that goes. Yeah. Okay. 
I'll grab this for you. Okay. All right, so I know we're on a wide angle lens here and it's not quite that zoomed in, but hopefully you guys can see a little bit over there. Kennedy, how are we looking? Okay, I will try to maybe slowly inch my way up here in a minute, uh, but I want her to get comfortable with us being right here. And I'll get the camera steady here in just a minute too. So she's having contractions, is that what that is? Yeah, so she's actively pushing. They'll do most of their hard pushing laying down like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, she may stand up, lick the ground some more, turn around. Um, mm -hmm. So typically their hard pushes are laying down. The You want your lamb presented with its front hooves first, and then its head should be coming out in between its front hooves. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be the hardest pushing part for the ewe, is getting that head and the shoulders out. Okay. And then the rest of it, she can usually stand up and um, it will fall out. All right, I'm going to get this camera set up on this tripod so I can get a real nice steady shot. Can you hold it for me just yeah. for a second? Okay, bear with me, audience. Uh, I'm going to get you a better looking shot here. Just give me just a minute. Got it. Almost there. Okay. There's some good bushes right there. Almost there. Okay, we're on the okay. tripod. We're on the tripod. Here, if you just slowly you might be able to go over to the right. Okay. I can see that she expelled a water bag. Okay. Yeah, I can see it. So she stands up for you. Okay. Okay, she did, she basically, oh, is that her tail? Oh, that's her tail. Mm -hmm. Okay, I was thinking it was a lamb. I'm gonna let these tripod legs down. I know we're a little shaky. I will get it steady for you guys. Just a second. All right, and I'm just going to slowly inch up a little bit at a time here. You can see the, oh, I don't know how well you can see. Two, one, two, two. Okay, yeah, I can see so start to hang it out. So you said she's standing up, sniffing that spot. Yeah, so she's gonna go back to where she, her butt was just right there. Okay. So she is licking and eating some of the mucus that's hanging out right now. Uh-huh. Um, so that's part of that bonding process. She's already starting to bond with her lamb. Uh-huh. She's getting used to the scent that that lamb's going to have. Wow. Um, the, her front hooves are already hanging out. Mm-hmm. So, this next part is going to be the hardest is actually pushing out the head yep. which is right which there. she's doing right now you can do it so she was scanned to have twins mm -hmm. so once she pushes this first lamb out 
you know, she will go and start licking it off. Mm -hmm. And then she stands up at part of it? Yeah. Oh, there you go. Good job, Mama. All right. We got one out. Ken, how's it looking? Mm hmm Okay. Okay. There we go. Slowly making our way. All right, it's free. So now she needs to get up. She's still eating some of the, the membrane stuff from the last time she got up. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, you know, she just had really hard pushes. She pushed the whole lamb out. She should be standing up soon and going and licking. The lamb came out with its face clear of the membrane. Mm -hmm. And then the lamb is usually strong enough to shake its head and, and sneeze. Mm -hmm. so that it doesn't aspirate. Um, but we want her to stand up and start licking it, and that will help stimulate it to stand up and start nursing. All right. And here she's already starting to, to call for it. The lamb bleated just a couple times. Uh -huh. And you said she's scheduled to have twins, right? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, uh, we got... Davies watching in Kenya. Thanks for watching. Lizzie Wonderless. Lizzie. I think that's Lizzie Price. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys are finding this as fascinating as, as I am. This has been an incredible live stream if you're just tuning in. Uh, we're watching a live lamb birth out on pasture here at Heifer Ranch. Uh, one was just birthed and we have a second one potentially on the way as well. So stick around. We're with our livestock manager, Christine Hernandez, giving you the breakdown on how the process works and getting as close as we can without disturbing the mom. May try to inch forward just a little bit in a moment, but this is an important part of the process. Yeah. Kennedy, I don't know if you can maybe zoom in on OBS or something something to think about yeah yeah we're gonna try to zoom in in a minute folks bear with us though wow it's incredible Thinking about up. So she can check on it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, a lot of times they'll do the, the really hard pushing. Uh huh. And so the head and shoulders came out. But for a while, the lamb's hips and back legs didn't come out yet. Mm. There we go, Mama. So she's checking on the lamb, getting that sack off. Yep, she's eating the membrane sack that's mm -hmm. around it. Mm -hmm. It already has its face. It came out with a clean face and was able to shake a lot of that off. So yeah. um, that's why I wasn't worried to go up there and check on it. Because mm -hmm. I could see that it could breathe. It wasn't going to aspirate anything. Gotcha. Um, so she will eat a lot of that stuff. She'll start licking it. They're going to start talking to each other. And usually within about you know, 10, 15 minutes, that lamb will be up searching for the teat to start nursing. Mm -hmm. Oh, she's trying early. She's, she says, I'm hungry.
And um, typically, how long usually between births on a set of twins? Um, so that all depends. I had a U push out triplets within 15 minutes, mm. um, like start to finish. Mm -hmm. You know, you, if she's going to have another one, she should have it within like 30 minutes. Yeah. Um, you would start to see another water sac expel first and then you want to have you want to see continuous pro progress so if she is showing signs of labor pushing but you're not seeing any lamb progression then you would need to catch her and check her and make sure that, that lamb is presenting normal and that she doesn't need assistance gotcha and how old is the U, did you say? She was born in 2021. Okay, got yeah, that's the number code. Yeah, so 2122. Gotcha. So with hers being born, you know, it's just after 1 o'clock here, um, we will let them bond for the rest of the afternoon. Uh -huh. And we'll do our field processing with these, you know, before we leave for the end of the day. Great. Yeah, this is so cool, Kennedy and, and Magnolia de Leon. This is fascinating. I mean, couldn't have timed it better for this live stream. Uh, we were hoping we would catch a live lamb birth, and just toward the end of the stream, when we were about to just set the camera up and let it roll, uh, one was happening, and here we are. So thank you all so much for joining us uh, live here at Heifer Ranch. And if you're watching, uh, you want to share this video with anybody you think might find it interesting, we'll be live for a little while longer because we're going to hang out and see if she gives birth to her twin. Uh, so you can share this video on your Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, wherever you are on social media. Let more people know about it because this is a pretty rare occurrence. Hey, Jorg, watching from Spain. Thank you so much for joining us. So it looks like she's got all most of the membrane uh, taken off. What will she do next? Um, she'll start like licking the actual lamb, mm -hmm. getting it dry. Mm -hmm. um, some of the moms will kind of start pawing at the lamb, helping to encourage it to stand up and start nursing. It all just kind of depends on what type of mom they are. Kennedy, if you'll keep that banner up, Live Lamb Birth. Awesome. Jorg will have his first lambs in June. So in Spain, he's going to be lambing in June. Excellent. Nice. What, uh, what breed are you raising, and uh, how many do you expect to lamb this year? So here in Arkansas, we schedule our breeding so that we lamb in the early spring. So right now, you know, it's beginning of March. We started lambing at the end of February. Um, we want to miss as much of the cold snaps from winter as we can, but we want our lambs on the ground as our grass starts growing. Mm -hmm. um, the grass is important, one, for the ewe to produce good milk 
but then you know shortly after a lamb's born within a week or two that lamb's going to be doing everything its mom is doing so most of its diet will come from nursing off of her but they'll also go and start you know consuming some of that forage with her and then that would put us processing our lambs late in the fall usually end of october beginning of november and we're shooting for our lambs to be 100 pounds 120 pounds by that time oh. We got uh, another great question. Uh, this one's from Lizzie Wanderlust. She, Lizzie asked, uh, does the ewe do anything specifically to protect the lamb from predators? Um, the most aggression a sheep could have is, you know, she'll stomp her feet or she may like headbutt something. Mm -hmm. um, for predators, we have that's why we have the dogs. But if she feels threatened, like, you know, by another ewe, or sometimes the dogs come up too early and, you know, they'll try eating some of her placenta. I've seen the ewes headbutt the dogs away or stomp their feet at them. But, you know, that's the most a sheep could do. Yeah, I'm losing signal. I've lost a couple, uh, they should be coming back. Sorry, Christine, just one no, sec. Good. There you go, honey. Okay, sorry about the technical difficulties there, folks. We are we are live streaming in the middle of nowhere, so uh, signal does jump around a little bit sometimes. Hopefully, it'll be coming back strong and stay with us. Um, I will move my appliances around just a bit. I think they might be overheating. Sorry, did you finish answering Lizzie's question? I believe so. Okay, did sorry. Did you catch it all? Um, yeah, uh, it might have been cutting out just a little bit, so if you don't mind, just one more oh, time. What yeah. do we do for, what do the ewes do? Um, so the way a ewe would protect her offspring, and so that's going to be like from other ewes or from our dogs. Like if our dogs come up and try to eat some of her placenta, you know, too soon, the most that she will do would be like stomping her feet or headbutting them away. For the bigger predators, that's why we have our livestock guardian dogs. Gotcha. Great question. Thanks, Lizzie. I did see a bald eagle fly overhead um, last Friday, so oh, that wow. made me a little nervous. I bet. Yeah, that's um, that's a predator for sure. Yeah, you it's think an aerial about. predator, and I I don't have any protection from that. Yeah. Hey, Mira. Erlis, uh, watching from Northern California, says that she just finished finished lambing last month. Congratulations. Hope you had a successful lambing season. We are catching a live lamb birth here at Heifer Ranch. The lamb is already up and suckling. All right, so she's getting that colostrum. Yep. Okay, I know the signal's weak. I'm gonna to try to move this bag to a stronger spot.
Hmm. She's watching she me. She sees you. Uh-huh. That's all right. I'm trying to get, I think I'm slowly getting better signal, hopefully. I think I'm just in a bad dead zone here. I'll just try to move the whole thing a little bit. There we go. Yeah, I was just in a bad spot. Okay. Oh, come on. Okay. Okay. Coming back strong. Sorry, folks, about the quality loss. If it was dipping there a little bit, hopefully it'll be coming back strong. And we'll maintain HD quality here. Okay. Okay. Um, so we have a, we do have a, let's see, Jorg followed up, said he's running a small farm, northern Spain, Grania de Calor. And they started 18 months ago. That's awesome, Jorg. Oh, Jorge. Uh, what is the first signal to be sure a ewe is pregnant, he asked. Pregnant? Yeah. Um, so... Hey, quiet on the set <laughs> there, ma'am. She's looking for a baby. <laughs> um, so... The way we do our breeding season helps us know if a ewe is pregnant or not. Um, so, some of the ewes out here, you can still kind of see it, but we give... We put a harness on our rams. Sorry, this this one is looking for somebody? Is that what's going yeah, on she's here? she's looking for a baby. Okay. She's not over here. Go on. So for the breeding season, we will put a marking harness on each of our rams and give them a color, a marking crayon. And so as he breeds them and mounts them, it will leave a mark on the ewe's tail head. Mm -hmm. And so a ewe's heat cycle is 17 days. At the end of the first heat cycle, we will change the ram's color to a darker color. So for example, this year we started with blue and then we moved to red. That way, if they get marked with red, they did not get bred during the first heat cycle, but you can mark down on which date you saw them get rebred, or the day they got marked with the crayon. 
Awesome. So that's how we know if they got bred, is if they don't come back into heat. Uh, and then when we do our ultrasounds, uh, you know, that is also another way to confirm that they are pregnant, uh, is doing ultrasounds and seeing how many fetuses uh, are in there. Great. Great answer. And uh, George, if you're still watching, we um, we do have a long form video coming out in just a couple of weeks where we talk about this process and a lot more in detail. Um, it's going to be a complete video on how we raise sheep here at Heifer Ranch. And we include everything from uh, breeding, like Christine talked about, to vaccinations, to lambing out on pasture, um, and so much more. And if you're interested in raising sheep, which you obviously are, subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications, and you'll know as soon as that video uh, is dropped in just a couple of weeks. It's going to be fantastic. Um, Amanda asks, she's watching from Missouri. Hey, Amanda. She asked, how many lambs or use, or how many lambs do ewes typically have? We want them to have twins. You know, if you say you have 10 ewes, it would be good to expect everyone to have a twin. So their first lamb is going to pay for the ewe, for the ewe's maintenance over the year, then that second twin is going to work to be where you make your profit in your sheep enterprise. Um, you know, mature ewes, you want them to have twins. The replacement ewe lambs, so the ones that are just giving birth when they're a year old, they... That's not yours. That's not yours. That's not yours. Um, they, will tip, <laughs> they will have twins or singles. I like it for them to have singles since it's their first time. Um, but then, you know, your really prolific use will have triplets. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. That is an adorable lamb. Magnolia, you can send us an email, uh, heiferusa at heifer.org, uh, to discuss a visit to the farm. Uh, we do educational tours and we do accommodate visitors on occasion. Um, so just shoot us an email and we can talk about uh, what we might be able to do. Yeah, so George said, thank you so much. And so that means if the ram loses interest, the ewe is pregnant. Does that sound right? Yes. Well, then it also comes back to the ewe. If the ewe doesn't stand for him to mount her or to breed her. Mm -hmm. um, so the only, re the only time she's going to be standing is when she's in standing heat mm -hmm. which is when she'll be the most receptive of the ram and the most likely to conceive gotcha and so if he loses interest it might also be because she's just not the, breeding well and either he he's too early or too late gotcha so she will she will only be in heat you know or ovulating for a certain amount of time and i believe in sheep that's like 24 hours mm -hmm. you know so that ram has a very short window to breed all of the ewes. Gotcha. So with our rams, I give each ram 30 ewes. And he can typically breed all of them. He can cover all of them. And then there may be one or two that come back into heat during that second cycle. Cool. Great That's answer. That's why we're having so many lambs right now. Yeah. <laughs> At one time. I'm, I'm speaking of time, well, first of all, George, thanks so much for the questions and thank you for subscribing from your other channel, Grania de Calor. You guys go give him a follow and check out all the cool stuff they're doing on their YouTube channel. Um, speaking of timing, yeah. Yeah, I know when we started the live stream, you mentioned that this is the time of day when you've been seeing a lot drop. Is that common? Do you use, see, usually see that, um, you know, during lemming season? So what, what we typically see is like we'll come out and do the check first thing in the morning, and we may have like a dozen lambs on the ground. So they could have given birth from the night before, during the night, early in the morning. But we also have another surge, you know, early afternoon, hmm. around lunchtime. Interesting. Um, we have, usually a few have their babies, and then some more later on in the evening. Yeah. So I noticed they're, they're sticking to that spot pretty well. How long will they stay there? Um, if she's gonna have another lamb, she mm -hmm. should stay there until she has her second lamb. Mm -hmm. And once that second lamb is up, nursing, following her around. Um, it also depends on what's going on around her. You know, if the flock comes back, she may move with the flock if she has her lambs with her. 
Um, if we disturb her and we make her move on, we also have some ewes, you know, that will stay in that spot for a whole day. Mm. Um, we so since we're laying on pasture, we're still doing rotational grazing. So we still move our flock to new pastures throughout our lambing time. The lambs make it more difficult because they don't really know the routine or know what's going on. And so we can move them in waves. So we can move the ewes that haven't lambed and the ewes that have older lambs that move very well. We can move all of them at one time and leave the ewes behind that have very fresh babies. And they are you know, they're willing to stay behind. They don't really want to move on unless their lambs are ready. I don't know if she's going to have another one or not. Mm. She's making her bed. Mm. Oh, she's going to prove me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I think the next one's coming soon. Yep. She's just having contractions again. Going to start pushing. All right, guys. Here it goes. Number two. Kennedy, we still good? You with me? So if you guys are just joining us, uh, we're live at Heifer Ranch and we're witnessing a live uh, lamb birth. Um, we've had one on the ground already and our second one is on the way shortly as we speak. So she's actively pushing right now, is that right? Yes. Okay. Yep. She'll do most of the hard pushing laying down. Yeah. Or all of it. Mm -hmm. Very rarely do they push the lamb out standing up yeah and we're we're really close i mean we could not ask for a better setup uh to get this live okay. too this is perfect um your camera's what like eight feet away yeah we're, we're literally about eight feet away from this you guys Uh, we got a great question from CR. Do you get any ewes that steal a lamb? Yes. Oh, wait. Uh, we'll we'll get to that in just a second. I think we're seeing... So what is this? The, that's the second water bag. Okay. So the lamb is inside that water bag. I uh, gotcha. So it may break. It may stay intact. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, that's your for sure sign that she's going to have another one. And she's... Or that she's having yeah. a lamb. And she's smelling the ground, already getting a sense for that lamb. Yeah. Gotcha. Checking on number one there. No big deal, just, um, you know, taking care of one while giving birth to another. Moms are very busy. <laughs> I can say that. Making her bed up. Can I answer the question? Now? Yes, please. Okay. Sorry. Do you use uh, steal? A, do you ever get any use that steal a lamb? I think you call that granny lamb. Yeah. You know so you can re refer to them as granny lambs uh, or granny use. So the reason why they steal other lambs is because they themselves are in labor. And it may be early labor, or it may be, you know, what she's doing right now, active labor. Um, they hear an, another new lamb calling, and they think it's their lamb. So their body is telling them that, you know, they have babies. And so they are out searching for where their baby is. 
And so when we get that, we do our best to take the ewe that's in labor and move her on mm -hmm. so that she can have her lamb somewhere else or take the ewe that already has her lambs and move them on to. You just want to separate them until she can have her actual babies. Because if you have a ewe that steals someone's babies, you can run into a few issues a little bit later on is that once the ewe actually has her lambs, she may not want that lamb that she stole from somebody else. And so the original you may not accept her lamb back. So then that lamb would just be orphaned and would be turned into a bottle baby. Gotcha. Or she may not want the lambs that she has, you know, that she physically has, and she'll want to take the lamb that she stole. Gotcha. Great question. Reed Farm says uh, it's like being an animal psychologist. It really is. You have to know all of this. So this will be lamb number 151 and 152 of this lambing season. Nice. Will this be the largest season? So far, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Last year we, I think, ended the season with 160, pretty close to 170 lambs. And uh, you said that you're having a lot more, you know, multiples. trip multiples. And is that just because the health of your flock is getting stronger overall, mainly, or? I think it's because they're so healthy going into the breeding season. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, a lot of people may have heard of like flushing. We don't do flushing, but the, the premise behind flushing is that before you breed an animal, you know, you'll increase their energy intake, you'll increase their diet so that they will ovulate more. Mm -hmm. And so that will help with your conception rates and how many lambs are conceived. Um, I think we basically did that, but out on pasture with forage, gotcha. you know, making sure they're very healthy going into the breeding season. And so we don't wean our lambs. We let the ewe self wean. So typically you would like wean your lambs at uh, 60 or 90 days. Your ewes would just go out onto a pasture that isn't as high of quality they just need to maintain themselves at that point. Where, and then you'd put your lambs on your really high quality forage. Well, we just keep everyone together all the time for management reasons. Um, so everyone's getting the same forage and we let the ewes wean their lambs themselves. Mm -hmm. So eventually they'll get to the, the size and the age where the ewes don't let them nurse anymore. And then their diet is fully forage. Less stressful on the lambs and on the ewes just to stay together all the time. Gotcha. Uh, Wilson Mungai asks, can a ewe have four to five lambs? Yes. 
We've had one set of quadruplets this year. On our first day of lambing, we had quadruplets. Um, we have another one out there that's very, very wide. I would assume she's having three, if not four. Mm -hmm. um, you know, higher multiples is more common in goats. But yes, sheep can definitely have that many babies. Yeah, even five? Yeah. Wow. So if you guys are just joining us, uh, we are watching a live lamb birth. We've had one on the ground already. You can go back and watch this video uh, after it's over and see that. And then we've got another one that's coming any minute now. And we're watching uh, the, the ewe just take care of her firstborn. She got it all clean. It's feeding already and up and walking. That's incredible that they are up and walking so fast. Yes, it's just nature. It's yeah. what they have to do. Yeah. You can hear it suckling. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, 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 she's not going to give us the great nope, view. That's okay. She's going to push out she the might, next she one. She get up and rearrange. Yeah, yeah. She's going back into pushing. Not sure if you guys can quite see it, but she is working on pushing the second lamb out. I can see it's starting to come out back there. And she'll probably get up and turn in just a minute. CR asked, uh, so can, can multiples be genetic, like to the ability to give birth to multiples? Yeah, and so that's one of the criteria for keeping our replacement ewe lambs, is I want them to have been born as a twin or a triplet. Great. I won't keep single, I won't keep ewe lambs that were born as a single. Yeah. Looks like she, uh... Nothing. Gonna, not quite there yet. And that water sec, that's just uh, what we would call like amniotic yeah. fluid, basically. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So if you guys are just joining us and you have any questions while we're live or or if you're watching the recorded version of the broadcast, you can type them down in the comments. But if you're with us live and you have any more questions, um, be happy to answer them. We're with Livestock Manager Christine Hernandez, and she can answer all things sheep. And it looks like we're going to get a good oh, view. A good view. Good view of this next birth, hopefully. And if you enjoy learning about raising sheep on pasture, well, I'm gonna stop because it's coming.
There you go. You can do it, that's right. Is that face first? The face, yeah. So that's, that's the proper way, right? Yeah. Okay. You're getting there, Mama. You're getting there. Good job. It's the hardest part. Yep. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to witness live on YouTube. She got the legs out. Almost. I see the first two legs are coming out, though. She has the legs and most of the head out. Yeah. But the umbilical cord is still attached, so that's how the lamb is still mm -hmm. breathing, even though she's not actively pushing right now. Right. There you go. There it goes. She's still working on it, guys. If you're still, if you're just joining us, we're witnessing a uh, live lamb birth here at Heifer Ranch. Uh, this ewe has already given birth to one on the ground behind her, and has a second one about halfway out, almost there. And she's gonna give the final push right now. It looks like there she goes. There it is. So, um, got our second one on the ground. That's a tough one. And there's the placenta, so that means she's done, yeah? Uh, she hasn't passed, passed her. But I mean, it start, is it starting, or is that just the umbilical cord? It's probably just the rest of like the 
Good Does the umbilical cord break yeah. on its own? Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And they both have their own, right? Yeah. So that that makes sense. Yeah. So their their placenta has multiple umbilical cords. Wait, attached yeah, and they have like the two uterine horns and. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So you were just checking on it, making sure it was doing okay. Well, and I could see that the back of it was still encased in the membrane. Uh huh. I was just making sure that the head wasn't. Yeah. Good. That way it didn't aspirate. Yeah, and it looks like she's got it off for yes. the most part. Yeah. And a lot of times, you know, it's it's us humans watching it happen. We're like, okay, it's taking a long time. Mm -hmm. When in reality and in nature, it's not. Yeah. It's not taking that long. Um, you know, if we weren't here, I'm sure everything would be just fine. But we get to witness it. That's right. Uh, we have a, another question. Um, let's see here. Um, David Smathers asked, how many years have you been working with sheep? Um, I started working for Heifer in 2016. And so at that point, I was the livestock coordinator. So I was in charge of the sheep at that point. We didn't have a flock this large. Um, so... 2016, 2023, seven years. Wow, seven years, and uh, is that the only animal you work with? I also manage our uh, forested pork operation. Mm -hmm. And you have a lot of poultry experience also, but you <laughs> are not in charge of that right now. No, I'm <laughs> not. Um, so yes, I used to be in charge of the poultry, the pigs, mm -hmm. and the sheep. But yep. now we have a poultry production specialist, Sam. Yeah. So she is just poultry. And we're doing a lot because our production is increasing a lot more. So it takes, I don't know, more time for each enterprise. Yeah. So, David, if you're new to the channel or if anybody else is, um, you know, we produce a lot of content here at Heifer USA on our YouTube channel about regenerative agriculture, livestock enterprises, uh, some horticulture as well. So we have lots of content on pastured poultry, forested pork grass-fed finished sheep pasture raised um, we do turkeys i think we even have some ducks here we're trialing out right now we've yeah, been filming so if you are interested in um, live streams pre-recorded videos educational information about how to farm regeneratively sustainably out on pasture then you have found your home here on youtube lots of great content christine has been educating folks uh, for several years here on YouTube and has many, many videos. And if anybody is new, welcome. We're glad you're here. We've had an amazing live stream today talking about raising sheep and lambing out on pasture. Over 150 ewes on the ground, or lambs on the ground. More on the way. We're about halfway through. And in this video, if you're also just joining us earlier, we field processed a couple of newborn lambs. Uh, you can go back and watch the, the recording after this is over to see what that was like. Uh, we gave an overview of our operation and answered a lot of questions along the way, so feel free to go back and watch the recording at any time. And we were hoping to catch a live lamb birth and number 2122 just so happened to oblige with a set of twins. I think that one's in labor up there too. We got another one in labor? That one on the top of the hill there. Oh. Yeah, I see her tail, the one with the black belly. Yeah, she's been pawing out the ground a lot. Yeah. Looking for a spot? Yep. Beautiful day to have a baby. Perfect day. Is this still supposed to storm tomorrow? I think Wednesday and Thursday is going to rain. They must they must know it and they're like, let's get this uh, done it's, today. That happens. Like when a low pressure system comes in, uh -huh. sometimes it causes more of them to go into labor. Yeah. So it's going to be nice today and tomorrow. So probably any lambs born going into that storm, mm -hmm. um, I'll put one of those 
Shearwell Lamb Max yeah. on them. Nice. All right, guys, we're going to stick around just for a couple more minutes and answer any last minute questions. Uh, again, thank you so much for hanging out with us today live at Heifer Ranch or if you're watching the recording of this video. Uh, we live stream all the time here on our YouTube channel. More great content from the ranch here in Arkansas and from amazing farms all across the country, giving you live tours up front, uh, front row seats, up close and personal. Always a great Q&A. Learn from other farmers around the country here, here in Arkansas ask questions lots of great content on the way if you're interested in raising sheep out on pasture we've got a 40 plus minute video coming in just a couple of weeks that is everything you need to know i think that we might even call the video that everything you need to know about raising sheep on pasture we've been working on it for over six months and are really excited to be releasing it really soon so hit that subscribe button turn on the notifications and you will know when we drop it um, David, thank you so much for watching. Wilson, Journey of Healing, thank you for watching. Uh, Kennedy Reynolds, Reed Farms, Luke Welch, George in, in Spain, everybody from all over the world. You guys have been fantastic audience to hang out with. And uh, if you, like I said, if you're watching the recording, get us some questions in the comments. Let us know uh, what you thought of this this video. Let us know what you'd like to see more of in the future, where you're from. Let's build a community around regenerative agriculture right here at Heifer USA. Don't worry, Mom, I'm just coming to get my camera. I won't bother you. We're going to pull back a little bit here. Okie dokie. Christine, will you come and say goodbye oh, and sign yes. off with me? <laughs> All right. A little bit of a cramp, and that's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the live stream today. Um, subscribe. Let us know what you'd like to see more in the future. Christine, yeah. thank you so much. This was, this was ridiculously <laughs> cool. <laughs> uh, what an amazing day out at the ranch. So. Good day to have a baby. Absolutely, absolutely. Let me know if you have any more questions. I'd be happy to answer them um, the best I can for you. Yep, you can uh, shoot us an email to heiferusa at heifer.org. Uh, if you're interested in Gallagher products, we got a link in the description for 10% off for you. Uh, lots of great content that we have here on our channel and lots more to come, so stick around. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you all next time. Have a good day.